Hello everyone, thank you very much to the organizers of this conference and thanks for coming to see this talk. In this presentation I discuss a chronological study of the spread of wheel-made ceramics in the Iberian Peninsula during the first millennium BC. This study derives from my postdoctoral research project at the School of History, Classics and Archaeology of Edinburgh University. So this focuses on the spread of the potter's wheel in the Western Mediterranean, and I combine a long-term approach with more detailed archaeometric analyses. So through this I look more closely at how the adoption of the potter's wheel transformed the organization of ceramic production in the number of case study areas indicated on this map. In this presentation I will instead focus on preliminary results of a chronological study which I conducted together with my colleague Anna Bloxham of Canterbury Christchurch University. I will start by introducing current perspectives on the introduction and extent of potter's wheel use in the Iberian Peninsula. I then discuss our data set, which is composed of information concerning broad shaping methods and absolute dates, um, and our methodology, which focuses on mapping the chronology of wheel-made pottery and compares regional variation in the uptake and spread of wheel-making. And I then br briefly discuss our results. So why would we want to map the spread of the potter's wheel? The spread of wheel-made ceramics in the Iberian Peninsula falls together with long-term socio-economic transformations leading up to urban life ways. We want to discuss the connection between this technological innovation and processes of social change and discuss how this varies between regions in the Iberian Peninsula. I need to mention here, of course, that the spread of the potter's wheel can represent a range of production methods. The title of my talk is therefore a bit misleading, apologies. Different forms of wheel use have been examined uh, in detail by the discussant of this session, Valentine Roux and others. Such studies deconstructed the preconception that the wheel spread simply through the economic advantages in the speed of production the me mechanism affords. The economic and social motivations underpinning the adoption of this technology are variable and context dependent and therefore do not correspond to the rise of mass production necessarily. Our study does not provide detailed information concerning the methods of wheel use, but instead looks at the utilization of rotor devi rotary devices for ceramic production more broadly. Despite this broad approach, we attempt to demonstrate how the use of potter's wheels became institutionalized in the Iberian, Iberian Peninsula through time. In the Iberian Peninsula, the spread of the potter's wheel is usually considered in relation to the arrival of Phoenician merchant colonists. Phoenician groups originating from city-states on the Levantine coast of the Eastern Mediterranean established trade colonies in the Western Mediterranean during the 9th to 7th centuries BC. Such Phoenician groups appear to have targeted these areas for exploiting new trade opportunities. The process of Phoenician colonization involved the intensification of mining and agricultural production for trade, particularly in olive oil, wine and salt. In and around the Phoenician colonies on the southern Mediterranean coastline, we find workshops focused on the production of pottery and metallurgy. These pottery workshops emerged as centers for the production of amphora and luxury tableware. Ceramics were produced in the Eastern Mediterranean tradition, utilizing potter's wheels and two-chambered updraft kilns. Ceramics were produced for regional and interregional trade, as indicated by archaeometric studies. So the map on the bottom left is, of this page shows how ceramics deriving from different Phoenician production centers circulated in the Western Mediterranean. Late Bronze Age ceramic production prior to the arrival of the Phoenicians in the same region um, is generally characterized by the production of table and cooking ware produced through slab building, coiling and pinching. Ceramics were all fired in reducing to uh, and mixed atmospheres in pit ovens or bonfires. So this is evidence from a recent PhD thesis by Al Alberto Dorado, who has studied ceramic production methods over, over a vast area in southeastern Iberia during the Bronze and Iron Age. Dorado showed that after the arrival of the Phoenicians, the use of wheel-made pottery expanded in this region. His analysis showed, however, that such ceramics were produced through variants of wheel fashioning, such as wheel coiling next to wheel throwing. However, it appears that the production of handmade pottery also continues. Problematically, only very few studies have considered various forms of wheel use and instead refer either to handmade or wheelmade pottery without analyzing these shaping methods more fully. Furthermore, little is known about mechanisms that, the mechanisms that were used by the Phoenicians. 
In other parts of the Iberian Peninsula, we find stone pivots thought to be part of potter's wheels in the late Iron Age contexts. These reflect pivots found in Eastern Mediterranean, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean and the Levant. So they might have also been used by the Phoenician workshops. It is unclear how such wheels were used, but it is likely that they reflect hand-operated stick wheels or were driven by two individuals. Although these wheels could have reached enough momentum to rotate independently, they were not the same as the kick wheels used during the Roman period. There is some confusion here about whether the Phoenicians therefore used fast potter's wheels, but there is more, uh, they are more generally considered to be low or slow wheels. In the centuries that followed, pottery workshops appeared across the southern and eastern half of the Iberian Peninsula. However, it is unclear what the adoption of potter's wheels reflect. Are we here dealing with a process of transformation enacted and instigated by the Phoenicians? Or is this a process that is more gradual and part of local processes and developments? We need to consider that the Phoenicians might not have been the first to utilize potter's wheels in the Iberian Peninsula. There are numer numerous examples of imported wheel made Mycenaean pottery in late Bronze Age contexts, suggesting that people must have been aware of different production methods prior to the arrival of the Phoenicians. Furthermore, recent macro trace analyses conducted on ceramics from El Castor de Cogotas in central Iberia has shown that rotary devices were used for variations of wheel fashioning as well as wheel throwing during the late Bronze Age, which is during the 9th to 7th century BC. Because this date range is quite imprecise and it is unclear uh, whether such uses, it is unclear whether such uses of potter's wheels coexist with or preceded the introduction of potter's wheels in the Phoenician colonies. To address such chronological questions and to consider regional differences in the uptake of potter's wheels, my research looks at long-term spatiotemporal spread of wheel-made ceramics. Our research is based on a data set of 576 radiocarbon dates and 245 pottery bearing site phases from 158 sites from across the Iberian Peninsula. This data set does not provide information considering the specific shaping methods used or information considering the location where ceramics were made. This is because studies utilizing macro trace analysis or archaeometric methods providing such information are rare. Nevertheless, most studies do indicate if ceramics are handmade, wheelmade or imported. This provides a general indication of broader shaping traditions across the region and shows how these change through time. We used kernel density estimation to map the temporal probability of site phases with wheelmade pottery. Radiocarbon dates were calibrated and their probability of falling into each of five 200 year time intervals was calculated. The resulting probability was used as a weighting mechanism for mapping the spatial density of site phases with ceramics using kernel density estimation. This demonstrated that the earliest distribution of sites with wheel made pottery occurs in southwestern Iberia around Huelba and other uh, Phoenician colonies. Subsequently, Wheel-made pottery occurs in central Iberia, broadly concurrent with transformation associated with orientalizing orthotessian spheres of influence in the, and, and also spreads into the northern Meseta area. So the orientalizing phenomenon refers to a period of hybridization that is reflected in material culture styles and technologies. Agricultural practices also change as well as metallurgical practices and architecture. Um, so, so broadly, this, this occurs in this shaded region, but also reaches much further inland into the regions of the upper Guadiana uh, River Valley of Extremadura. So this process of transformation um, also corresponds to a, an increasing reliance on wheel-made uh, fineware and hybrid greyware ceramics. The production of uh, wheel-made pottery during this period corresponds also to the emergence of Celtiberian pottery production. So so this is kind of associated with the uh, product, the, the emergence of wheel, uh, workshops that used also two chamber, cha chambered uh, updraft kilns. Um, and, and these are associated broadly with the kind of rise of opila settlements. So the spread of wheel making in the Iberian Northwest occurs in the last centuries of the first millennium BC, just before for or during the Roman conquest of this region. 
If we look at the distribution of sites with imported whale-made pottery, so these are marked in the literature as non-local as well as whale-made, we find that such ceramics are broadly related to coastal areas or coastal hinterlands. Imported ceramics appear to be more common in the first half of the study period. During the later period, whale-made technology and expertise became increasingly widespread in the Iberian Peninsula. And this also corresponds to the, uh, a decline of the Phoenician colonies after the 6th century BC. So perhaps here we, we see a shift in, uh, in the trade, trade routes or trade networks in, in this region. A second method we used was aimed at refining the chronological resolution and create regional timelines for the adoption and spread of wheel-made pottery. We now compare different regional trajectories for which we divided the sites into five regions. The SPD method sums together the probability distributions of individual calibra calibrated radiocarbon dates to examine diachronic variation in the prevalence of the dated ceramic vessels and the technologies they represent. Radiocarbon dates were thinned so that no more than three radiocarbon dates per ceramic type within each site phase were included in the weighting prioritizing dates with low associated errors and the lowest risk, risk of marine carbon sources. The SPDs for handmade, wheel-made and imported ceramics were plotted separately to allow for analysis of Iberia-wide and regional differences in the changing prevalence within, group, within each group. So the results point out that the relative importance of handmade and wheel-made pottery differs between regions. There is a rapid uptake of wheel-made pottery in the south and west and a slow uptake of wheel-making in the north. The presence of wheel-made pottery is roughly equal to handmade pottery um, in the south, but handmade pottery is much more prevalent in other regions. So in the central region, here there is a rapid decline of handmade pottery around 400 BC, timed after the so-called Hallstatt Plateau, in, in the calibration curve, so this is this blue shaded area, and this is a period when radiocarbon dating is notoriously imprecise. The gradual decline in some probability in all regions except for the north reflects the increasing, increasing reliance on relative dating methods instead of radiocarbon dates here, so it does not reflect the decreasing dependence on pottery. In summary, the spread of wheel-made pottery reflects regional diversity, both in the chronology of the first introduction of the potter's wheel and in the pre prevalence of its use. Phoenician pottery workshops, producing pottery for trade and local demand, never completely supplant the use of handmade pottery, and that particularly before 400 BC, wheel-made pottery is only present at some sites. Unfortunately, archaeologists do not tend to focus on studying the persistence of hand shaping ceramic technologies in this context and rather look at the significance of the presence of wheel-made pottery. So I think it's definitely interesting to look at this handmade pottery and how this persists during the rise of wheel-made pottery more broadly in, in such regions. This continuity is much more obvious in the northern region where, pot where the potter's wheel is only broadly used during the later stages of the first millennium BC. And this area is characterized by socio-economic continuity, also visible in other aspects of the archaeological assemblages. During the first millennium BC, the northern part of the Iberian Peninsula, and particularly the northwest, is inhabited by people that settled in small hilltop settlements called castros. Such castros are generally considered as self-sufficient units that were hostile towards e each other, perhaps. So this self-sufficiency might also have extended to the production of pottery. If we consider the possibility of a link between the potter's wheel and surplus production, we can expect this technology to be of more use in areas where people were more reliant on trade than being completely self-sufficient. This consideration also extend to extends to observations from other regions in the Iberian Peninsula, where the increasing use of wheel-made pottery corresponds to the gradual rise of proto-urban settlement in, in Opida. Here we find the emergence of more centralized and intensified agricultural production with the emergence of pottery workshops using the wheel. Furthermore, the role of, uh, and popularity of, lo of the local production of wine further contributes to the broader adoption of wheel-made pottery too. So, so, so uh, wheel-made pottery provides the amphora uh, for the storage and transport of wine as well as in-demand drinking vessels that we see in other parts of the Mediterranean. 
In conclusion, while further research is needed to unravel the specifics of the transmission of wheel-making technologies in the Iberian Peninsula, our method has picked up several broader trends in the directionality and chronology of the spread of potter's wheels. We demonstrated that with limited information from publications of varying quality, we can produce meaningful patterns in the spread of innovations in the Western Mediterranean, utilizing systematic and quantitative methodologies. I will focus more deeply on the long-term developments in ceramic technology alongside the adoption of the potter's wheel, focusing on the question of how this shift ref reflects also a shift in domestic uh, to workshop production. So I utilize here archaeometric methods, which provide insights into the provenance uh, of ceramic vessels. So I'll look at these different sites on the map below. I will also look further into the question of the prevalence of different types of production methods and see how uh, handmade pottery persists alongside um, wheel making. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you'd like to read more, we'll try, we're trying to get this study published in Journal of Archaeological and Anthropological Sciences. So thank you very much also to Anna Bloxham, who's been key to developing this study.